Labor Day weekend, so only two players showed up for the game. Whip up a quick one shot so they don't waste their time and get the play. This is their story. Agile and Rowdy Skelton are sent on a scouting mission while the carriage is being manhandled back to the refugee camp. Their mission is to infiltrate an enemy camp under night cover and do their best to obtain any information on trip and supply movements. Rowdy and Agile make their way through the trees to where the supposed camp was to be and find it. Also, Rowdy brought the know. As they begin to make their plan, Agile Skelton makes a rough headband for himself with long tails sticking out of the knot in the back and folds it so that his eye socket looks angry. Operation Bonehound is a go. They begin to pick their way around the camp to some infantry tents near the rear. Rowdy moves past as Agile opens the back of the tent to the pair of feet sticking out from some blankets. Agile checks to make sure he's sleeping before grabbing all of his shit in the tent and tossing it out the back. Underwear, socks and other such clothes are raining down into the grass as Agile searches for intel and only finds a journal. Rowdy spies the sock and tells the Noel to wear them. Noel shakes her heads and says fuck no. Rowdy eventually convinces the Noel to wear the fuzzy wool socks in order to make her more stealthy. The Noel is grumbling as she walks awkwardly behind Rowdy. Rowdy finds his own tent to search and quietly pulls the tent flaps apart and is looking out to see a dude sitting on a stump at the front of his tent, cleaning the day's wear and tear off his boots. Rowdy goes to close the flaps and the soldier perks up. His soldier spidey sense is tingling. As Rowdy closes the flaps, the soldier sees the tent flaps rustling. Gordy, I knew you were up to something he says, and begins to walk through the tent towards the back where Rowdy and the Knoll is. You're not going to get me this time, the soldier says jauntily, and grips the tent flaps. The Knoll jumps behind a tree that's not really thick enough to hide her, and Rowdy falls to the ground playing dead. Soldier walks out, but sees nothing due to darkness. A little a ways, Agile opens another tent. As his skeletal hands pull apart the tent flaps, he's staring right into the back of a head. A soldier is sitting there, Tiredly whittling and yawning, Agile's skull looms behind him, the firelight from the front of the tent hiding his shadow. Agile's sockets are almost within hair-tickling range, and the skeleton freezes. Back to Rowdy. The soldier pops out the back of the tent and is confused, looking around in the darkness. Gordy? he asks, and walks out holding his bit, looking around. Noel is excitedly wagging her tail. It flashes on each side of the tree in the darkness. Soldier can't see anything and even walks past Rowdy laying there on the ground. Rowdy seeing him walk by, scrabbles quietly on the ground for a rock and wings that fucker into the trees and bushes. Soldier goes, pfft, classic Gordy, and walks out past the knoll's tree. As he's walking, Soldier notices the knoll. Knoll and the soldier lock eyes and everyone freezes. Over with Agile, he tries to exit the tent, but the awkwardness of the action and surroundings cause his hand to brush against the soldier's blade. Soldier drops what he's whittling and whips his hand back, clasping the skeleton around the sleeve covered wrist. Soldier feels the sleeve for a second, then turns his head slightly. Give me a fucking break, Gordy. Enough of the goddamn pranks. Agile skeleton sweats a bit of calcium. <laughs> Slightly wiggles his fingers and lets his hand go limp in defeated expression. For some reason, also wants to smack the back of his head. Rolls for strength. Just smacks the shit out of the back of this man's head. Soldier yarls angrily and spins around. Now eyed a socket with a very nervous looking skeleton wearing a grey headband. Over with Rowdy. He stands up quickly and silently, reddling his massive scythe makes a very calculated swipe at the soldier and is able to split the spine cleanly. Soldier was midway into a yell when suddenly it's lights out and his body crumbles. Noel comes out from behind the tree, taking off the socks and saying that it was all the socks fault. <laughs> With Agile, he makes to grapple the man and snap his neck. Instead, he just yanks him out of the back of the tent with a wah! <laughs> and they both begin to struggle in the brush behind the tents. No one in the camp hears the ruckus however, and everyone keeps on eating such. After a bit of struggling, Agile ends up punching him in the throat and crushes it with little difficulty. Soldier begins to choke and gag while clawing back towards his tent, trying to get the gear inside. Rowdy sees this and steps over gamely and stomps on the back of the guard's neck with a crisp snap. Soldier dies, arms out reaching towards his tent and tears forming in his eyes. Both skeletons shoot each other a thumbs up and go in for a high five. Again, people fail to notice the noise. Both skeletons look around and notice a kind of command tent in the middle and begin to notice carts scattered around the camp and one is filled with people. Dirty, ragged people. They also notice there is a few fully armoured soldiers patrolling around in a small grip 
and in the middle of the camp is a long table with people eating and drinking. As they are looking, the gnoll notices that one of the tents is empty and begins rooting around, cutting up the pillows to try and find hidden goods and scattering feathers all over both her and the ground, spits at the feathers while looking inside the rucksack. Rowdy stomps over and scuffs her, dragging her away from the tent in a trail of feathers as they make their way towards the top edge of the camp. Agile begins to low crawl towards the big tent, skittering along the ground on his skeletal fingers and bones until he reaches the back of the tent, pulls out his knife and begins to carve away at the tent's fabric, making a little slot that his skeletal self can wiggle in through quietly. His skeletal head pops through and he finds himself looking up from between the thighs of two rope-bound women, with two other women looking down at him from the tent wall. Agile is rattled and places his fingers against his skeletal teeth. Rowdy begins making his way around some barrels while listening to guards chatter, sticking to the shadows, and hears about how the soldiers moved house to house while the city burned, taking slaves and killing those who wouldn't make the trip. Rowdy rattles angrily and keeps making his way around. After a few more feet, he notices a slave staging area and there are three sticks of slaves tied via a master chain to an iron ground anchor. Rowdy looks over at a half-elf and the half-elf looks back at Rowdy. Rowdy places his finger against his teeth and the half-elf nudges a dwarf next to him. Agile spooks the woman so hard that they instantly faint falling down literally just as the inhabitant of the tent walks out of the flaps half out of the tent agile scrabbles to his feet watching the person while moving around the table agile taps into the necromancers and tells her he's in position and has found maps and intel necromancer tells him to stare at the table and don't move and begins to channel their vision together in order to transfer information to her own paperwork Agile is staring hard at the maps and charts while the woman slowly wakes up and the tent owner fully leaves the tent to go drink. Women are crawling slightly towards Agile and tug at his pants, begging him not to leave them. Rowdy is working towards the ground anchor and trying to get in touch with the necromancer. He can't get in touch with either Agile or the necromancer and then turns around and sees the gnoll rooting around inside another empty tent. Rowdy throws his hands into the air in frustration, then drops to the ground, skittering towards the anchor. What the fuck is that? One of the slaves breathes, terrified. Slaves actually recoil from seeing the skeletons and all of them being too quietly panicking what? Half-elf looks down in mice. What the shit? As he sees the skeleton looking around at the anchor and look up at him, half-elf visibly splutters. Rowdy gives a small half-hand wave and places his fingers to his teeth. Half-elf bemusedly waves back as the dwarf is looking around for him. Is that a fucking skeleton? He growls, beard full of old blood and soot. Shut up, he's apparently our skeleton. The half-elf says back and points to the anchor's lock. Rowdy pops his head up to check on the guards, then begins to wiggle his finger inside the lock, fussing with the tumblers. Rowdy hears, Haha, skeleton key, from one of the slaves. And as soon as he does, the lock clicks open. Rowdy victoriously begins to pull on the chain, thinking it will put it out from the manticles of the slaves, but forgets there's an anchor in the end. A whole stick of slaves begins to slowly scoot across the staging area, bunging up against each other as the skeleton pulls slowly on the chain with his arms. Half-elf begins to panic and scream whispers, Stop! 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 The Rowdy. Just give me the chain, he says, and takes the chain from Rowdy, drawing the chain through his own manticles and begins to assist the other slaves. All the slaves are energised, and as Rowdy undoes their anchor lock, they start undoing their chain almost immediately. Soldiers are so drunk at this point that they aren't even paying attention to the slaves in the background. A skeleton slowly picking his way across them and helping them. Agile, on the other hand, is trying to push these women away and keep his eye sockets on the map, lightly slapping at them and pointing at them to be still. Finally, the necromancer has all the information she needs and asks how Agile is doing. Relays about the women, and he and the necromancer argue for a bit on whether or not he has time to be fucking with them. Unknowing of Rowdy's undoing three sticks of slaves. <laughs> Agile breaks connection for a moment and tells the women to grab all the books and charts they can and make their way to the forest. Despite their bruises and other injuries, they quickly move around the tent. The women gather up all the stuff they can and beat feet out of the back of the tent towards the trees. No one noticing four scantily clad women hauling ass across the grass. Rowdy is also successful, funneling slaves into the woods with the knoll leading them. Ah, lovely, they both hear. And both of the skeletons look over from their respective positions to the centre of the camp, where the roaring cry came from. 
huge Arterman's captain is walking to a small cart that is also full of slaves and the slaves are shrinking away and moving into the corner of the cart like chickens in a kill pen. Captain unlocks the chain, chuckling to himself, and pulls a young male off the chain. The young male begins to scream in terror and flail. The captain drags him by the hands towards the campfire. All the soldiers are watching quietly. Some of them are looking away with disdain as they chew their food or drink from their mugs. The captain holds the young boy by both feet and hands now. He holds him amongst the crackling campfire, his dirty clothes instantly catching on fire. The young boy screams, and the captain's dark laughter are the last things the skeletons hear before the session ends. Captain of the small camp is currently roasting his poor soul on the fire for some unknown reason. Entire camp is shrinking away from the event. The people at the table are trying to look everywhere but where the captain is roasting the person and some are even hunching over their drink. Other soldiers in the camp are making themselves scarce and huddling away out of sight. Rowdy Skelton overhears some soldiers speaking about their disgruntled feelings about being put under command of this particular captain, throwing the title The Butcher around a few times as they clearly displeased with his actions. I know he bought them and they're his property but come the fuck on man. Rowdy fries his non-existent brows and rummages around in some tents for some crossbow bolts, but instead finds a short sword and a patrolling spear. Even the knoll is mildly freaked and huddles with the slaves Rowdy had freed. Agile Skeleton is still trying to show the woman he released where to go and writes out a small map of how they can get to the refugee camp. Manages to write down a pretty good map despite it having some strained words such as bottle o and drongo thrown in at some places. Women, arms loaded with loaded books and dispatches, looks over the map and nods, then books into the woods with their booty, their own booties glowing in the moonlight. <laughs> Agile Skelton engages sneak daddy mode, and Low crawls his way back into the big tent, taking position near the front flaps. Both Rowdy and Agile notice the horses in the camp, lift their head up and begin to move towards the edge of the woods by a small cluster of carts, and no one notices a figure swiftly moving through the camp. The fully armed patrol nopes the hell away from the captain and makes their way behind the group of tents, all of them hard-faced and sweating nervously. The soldiers at the table are beginning to drink more heavily now, as the captain's victims begins to expire on the flames, and in thus screams less. Rowdy takes the spear into his hand and moves along the edge of the camp to get a better view of the table. Agile Skelton parts the command tent's flaps slightly to view the table as well. No one pays any mind to the cloaked figure, fully decked out in Arterman's armour and regalia, drinking beside them and clunking his mug against theirs in silent cheers. The horses, as well, are now gathered around a figure at the edge of the woods, his skeletal hand sliding along the fuzzy nose of one of the horses. The fire of the camp casts a second light into the hooded figure's face, and if one were paying attention they would see nothing but darkness where the eye should have been. Rowdy. Seeing some soldiers moving towards the woods where the slaves are moving through slash hiding in, picks up a rock and rockets it into the largest tent, cracking the centre pole and exiting out of the other side of the tent. Soldiers jump in shock of the noise behind them and spin around to the fallen tent, and Rowdy shakes his skeletal fist in a oh yeah gesture. Agile Skeleton pops his skull out of the tent flap for a moment, giving his surroundings a good looky loo and knows exactly he's sitting at the table with the soldiers. Perking up his necromantic link, he makes contact with the drunk skeleton, who raises his mug to Agile and waves cheerily. Agile skeleton rolls his sockets and then sees the captain just playing with the dead lad's body, holding it up and looking at it almost mockingly, before dropping it onto the ground, then grabbing its foot and dragging the body towards the table. All the other soldiers begin to sweat out of panic that he's bringing the burnt body towards the table, and a clever gleam passes drunk skeleton's sockets. Drunk Skelton gestures at the captain in a I'm appalled motion and tries to thump his hand on the table to get their attention, but instead slaps the table a little and catches the plate, causing a piece of chicken to fly across the table and rampage into a few mugs overturning them. He has, however, gotten their attention. Drunk Skelton rolls his shoulders and then pulses out his drunk aura, but fails to get enough of the aura going to really have an effect. Now that they're all staring at him, they all notice that he is fully armed and armoured as if he's on the road. But they all lack any real fuck to give, and instead go back to drinking and chatting while giving him the side eye. 
Drunk Skelton is a little angry at this and lets out another pulse of drunken aura and this time has enough juice to send out a tipsy wave. The soldiers at the table feel the pulse and all shake their heads at once, some looking down at their mugs quizzically as if asking if something is wrong with their drink. Other soldiers are holding their heads or catching themselves from falling off the table as they lean back mid-pulse. Even the captain feels the wave, dropping the burnt boy and looking down at his hand as it shakes slightly. On the other side of the camp, Auspicious Skeleton quickly befriends the horses and makes his way towards some unused carts and defeatly puts the horses into their harness. While Auspicious is being agile and precise in his movements for staying sneaky, he looks over and sees Drunk Skeleton openly slapping the backs of soldiers next to him and doing a silent laughter shake of the shoulders before dragging over a keg and pouring beer directly into two soldiers' mouths as they all cheer with a sudden drunkness. The armed patrol is actually making their way away from the majority of the camp. The soldiers around the tent begin to get into a technical and philosophical debate of just how the hell these two holes appeared and how they nearly cut through the fabric. The captain is staggering, shaking his head hard, but has continued to drag the boy to the table. All the drunken soldiers get extremely uncomfortable, and some even openly show their displays. Rowdy Skelton, seeing an opening, hops into an open view for attack and cranks back his arm, the massive patrol spear cocked in a textbook spear throw. No one notices a skeleton slowly rise from the bushes, skull glinting in the moon and campfire light, arm back as even his bones flex with magical might. Rowdy throws the spear so hard there's almost a small crack as it pierces the air, whistling through the air like a missile. But as fate would have it, a soldier stands, telling his mates he has to take a pee. Just as he begins to rise, the spear crashes through his ribcage and pins him slightly to the table, the head embedded deep into the wood. The soldier gives a shocked laugh, coughing slightly and slowly sits back down, the shaft of the spear bending and keeping him upright in a seated position. Rowdy hears a voice go, nice one, in the back of his skull, the necromancer having been watching. All of the soldiers spin around just in time to see a figure yeeting himself through the air into the bushes with a loud crash of vegetation. The pin soldier gets a few more anguish coughs and almost calmly shakes his head, whispers, just my luck, as he expires from blood loss on the table, having quickly bled out. The knoll, having heard the sounds of combat, begins to get amped up and whips out her combat knife. Agile Skelton sees the captain giving him his back and takes the initiative to begin his attack and leaps upon the back of the captain. The captain shouts in anger and confusion and begins to spin while grabbing over his shoulder and head at Agile. As he spins, Agile Skelton has to hang on by his hands as his legs are being whipped away, flying in the air. Manages to get a single cut in the captain with his knife and is now trying to just hold on to the captain, his view mostly being the captain's back or the whirling camp around him. Drunk Skelton looks around at the soldiers and they are completely enthralled by the fact that a headband wearing skeleton is now spinning through the air. Drunk points to the burnt boy, points at them and then points at the captain. Some of the soldiers do agree, some showing indifference in their drunken state. Drunk then leaps off the table and runs across the top, kicking idle monks out of the way before leaping through the air at the captain. However, as he's travelling through the air, he looks over and sees Agile looking at him from a few inches away. With a clatter, their bodies smash together, but Drunk is able to grab onto Agile's legs and the spinning bone nado continues as the captain just spins in panic to get whatever is on top of him off. Soldiers at the table are laughing, cheering and ducking or leaning back when Drunk's boots fly over the top of the table as they spin. Drunk, in his frustration and anger that his plan is not going as he imagined, he waits for an infernal lull in the spin. While a mighty contraction, he pulls against Agile Skelton, who also passes his strength check, and both of them yank down the captain to terra firma. While all of this is going on, Auspicious tells the horses to stay still, giving them many nose and head pats in the process, and stalks towards the slaves that are left in the cart, the survivors of the captain so far. They shrink away at the sight of him, but he calms them down and through a very direct series of motions, such as a vibrant and very entertaining pantomime of the coachman cracking a whip. The slaves understand that he wants them to get in the cart as he sets up. The slaves trundle out of the cart, but a smaller girl cries out softly as her foot is hung in the wagon. Auspicious looks into the slave wagon and sees there is a heavy metal ball attached to the end of the slave chain and hefts the metal ball up to allow the small girl to get down and continues to carry it, 
as the string of slaves rattle and shamble away into the darkness. Rowdy leaps out of his bush cover and tries to sling a knife into his eye while the captain is face down in the ground. The knife instead skips off the ground and the back of the knife cracks into the temple of the captain, who loudly groans and claps a hand to the side of his face. Ow! Who does that? Rowdy shuffles his feet in a panic and reaches to the supplies and comes out with a hammer. Rowdy throws the hammer. Hammer also prangs off the head of the captain, who yells again and claps his other hand to his head. Who keeps throwing stuff at me? He yells, looking around in confusion and pain. Blood is now pouring down his face, which the captain keeps trying to wipe off his face. The knoll leaps into combat with some of the tent soldiers, and with an excited trill begins engaging in a swirling melee with these soldiers, whom only have maybe a small belt knife. The knoll slashes away at her combatants and parries away at their strikes easily while ducking and whirling around them. The agile skeleton leans up, jaw clackling and removing the dirt from his bones, and sees a knife and hammer thump off the head of the captain and the cheering soldiers who raise their mugs mockingly. Agile scrambles to his feet, pulling out his trusty hammer. Rattle, rattle. Yes, Agile. <laughs> and brings down the hammer and the captain. However, Agile is now fully exposed as a skeleton, wearing black clothes and a headband, and continues to hammer down the captain as the soldiers look on in both horror yet approval. The blows are, however, mostly glance, chipping away at HP, and the captain screams and tries to avoid the hammer. Their thoughts, however, are simpered slightly by Drunken Skeleton, giving out another pulse of aura and standing up and giving the table and soldiers a thumbs up. All the soldiers look at each other, ignoring the dead guy, and then look back at the Drunken Skeleton to give him a round of a thumbs up. Captain is now curled into a ball in terror and is still trying to roll away from Agile, his will to fight seemingly broken. Drunk Skeleton, seeing a shot for the neck, goes to try and break it with a mighty punch. Instead, he ends up slapping the shit out of the back of his neck, the sound like thunder. Ah! Screams the captain, and has failed so many rolls at this point that the man is nothing but broken. Drunk reaches down, rips off his rank, and puts it on his own uniform. The captain reaches up and goes, No, no, that's mine! Before Agile slaps his hand away with his hammer with a rattle. Drunk skeleton poses proudly before the soldiers who look around at each other, confused, as to just what they should do, seeing a skeleton rip the rank off their CO and pin it on themselves. They don't get paid enough for this shit, and just sit still. DM note, I've rolled so many ones on the enemies that it boggles my mind. A suspicious skeleton uses his staff to snap the chain, and ends up doing enough damage to it that he can pry a chain link apart and get them mostly unchained and free. They all scramble into the cart, and a few of the slaves look over the lip of the cart to see the skeletons in the distance, posing and giving the captain a few kicks and further slaps, while hyping up the small crowd. The armed soldier patrol knows exactly what's going on, and holds a hand up to their faces to block their vision. None of them friend the captain. They make their way behind another cluster of tents, take off their helmet, and then put their hands in their ears, unloved indeed. Noel is still cutting the shit out of these dudes, and hasn't taken a single point of damage yet. She's almost twirling and dancing with them, giving small cuts here and there until their bodies are mostly blood from the small cuts all over their bodies. Rowdy pulls out his short sword and ducks away to try and help out his Noel, and brings a more deadly appearance to the party, shoving one on the chest and causing him to crash into the broken tent with a wimp of cloth. Soldier just tosses out his little belt knife in defeat and just staying in the tent. The captain, however, has finally made it to his feet, his face and neck covered in many slap marks and still honing his hands over his head. He looks around for a weapon and looks at the soldiers, barking out a, A weapon! Give me something! The soldiers sit there, icy cold, and all of their eyes slowly swivel over to drunk and agile, who has rallied together a few feet away. Agile leaps forward with his hammer, delivers a few more meaty blows before dancing back away, keeping his spacing. Drunk Skelton points at the beaten leader, and thinking in his head, I'm the captain now. The beaten leader stands and faces the man who took his rank, and is finally able to regain some frame of dangerous. The gesture is short-lived. Drunk Skelton rears back and slaps the shit out of the old captain's throat. The soldiers cheer and raise their mugs, enjoying the show. The old captain is wheezing and holding his throat, as the slap did have some force behind me. Drunk Skelton then points at the soldiers and holds his hands next to where his ears would be. Drunk soldiers cheer loudly and are game. Drunk spins around and slaps the captain again hard in the forehead, 
snapping his head back and causing him to stumble backwards towards the soldiers at the table. A red hand make glowing hot and pink on his forehead. Two soldiers thunk their monks together and laugh while others yell in approval. The demoted captain has taken too much, his soul too hurt. His manhood, nothing but tatters, and he begins to cry. It's like really ugly crying. He sinks down to his knees, holding his neck and face while fat tears roll down his face. The soldiers behind him are laughing and crying, and some even throw food bones at him. The bones bounce off the back of the soldier's head. Drunk and agile, including auspicious who ran over with the shackles and begins shackling the fallen captain, begin kicking dirt on the captain and delivering sharp slaps here and there until the slaves in the woods are on their way and Rowdy finishes up the combat alongside the knoll. Agile Skeleton has had his fill and clenches his fist up, a stealth mission successful. Drunk pins the rank he took to some random soldier at the table and they have a mighty crisp high five. Morale improved. Enemy morale, but whatever. Soldier rubs his rank lustily to much laughter. Drunk runs over to the cart. Rowdy has to throw the bloodthirst knoll over his shoulders and runs through the camp with her on his shoulders, growling angrily and flailing her knife. Auspicious has an evil plan and is the last of the load. Everyone looks over to see Auspicious, dragging the chained once captain along the dirty gravel. His tear-stained eyes look at his once soldiers laugh at him as he goes. He gets thrown in the cart, the slaves taking a few cheap shots at him. The strange party makes their way down the road, a slowly rising sun warming up the sky as they clop down the road. So look, as always guys, I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed this part. I did. I thought it was a nice wee like, diversion of the campaign. I really enjoyed it. But uh, if you get the chance, check out the author's YouTube channel uh, called Guard Below. I'll link to that down below, so I will. So that's definitely something to check out. Um, he's working on a few things at the minute. He's dead on, fella. I've been sitting talking to him. So, look, go ahead, check out his channel. If you're also going to check out some other channels, definitely check out Thread Thrasher. I'm still completely demonetized on this channel. Hopefully, we'll get that sorted out this Sunday I can apply for it so like, hopefully in the future we can get things back to normal otherwise ugh, I don't know I don't know also um, if you enjoyed the classic woe gameplay <laughs> I am currently playing classic woe at the minute not extremely but I am playing it a wee bit I am on EU servers Zandalor tribe uh, sorry Zandalor tribe um, role playing PvP server I'm on Horde um, you can find me, um, my main character is a orc warrior called Neckbeardia, so if you want to play with me, um, just like, you know, just message me in-game, you know what I mean? That'll be the easiest way, because um, I'm have got i not really playing with anyone of them, and I'm just decking around doing quests and stuff, but I'd love to be able to sit and play with some of you guys, you know, I think that'll be really cool. But, uh, look, as always, I th hope you guys really enjoyed this part. I really did. Uh, Megan really enjoys the old skeleton party. I think it's probably one of my favourite stories that i'm doing at the minute it probably is my favorite i really look forward to doing them so like um as always hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you in the next video